Hi, I'm Jonathan, aka the physicist at Samuelsons of Whitney and SmallScaleBottling.com. Today is our birthday, yay! And in honor of our birthday, we thought we'd share with you some of the tips and tricks and maybe a few words of wisdom that we found over the years with working with lots of producers and brand owners, and we thought you might find them useful too. So, from the top, number three. The first tip is spend your money wisely and in the right place. Prioritize your spending. We cannot emphasize this enough. Before you have designed your lovely shiny, shiny catalogs and had them printed, we recommend you actually have your product in a bottle and worked out how much it's gonna cost first. Work out where your money has to be spent, then anything that's left over, you can use that for your marketing and for your other bits and pieces that will improve your product and its position in the market. We can't tell you how many times we've had customers come to us with unique and bespoke bottles or closures. They've been to branding agencies that have their lovely marketing flyers, but they don't simply have a product yet. And they then come to us asking for special consideration because they're broke, but they want us to buy into the revolution that is their product that only they can produce and that has a market of every single person in the world and they will all want to, sp want to spend money on their product. Those same customers tend to come driving Range Rovers and with Rolex watches on their wrists. Now, if that is you, we suggest you sell your Rolex and finance your bottling because if you don't believe your product enough to do that, why should we? To everybody else, we would suggest that quite simply get the foundations correct first. Where does your money have to be spent? Spend it there, work out those costs, and then everything else can come later. Item number two. Ticking every USP box. Please don't do this and don't feel the need to do this. Let me give you an example of a label that we come across very, very regularly. Look at this amazing product. Now let me tell you a little bit more about it from its label. <gasps> Look at this. It's an all natural infusion, gluten free, color free. It's vegetarian and vegan friendly with no additives or preservatives. It's a drink that will give me a healthy energy rush with added vitamins and minerals, and it's going to make me poop rainbows, and my urine can be used as an eczema treatment. This is going to make my skin shine and can be sold to every organic shop worldwide. The ingredients are grown by artisan growers in, insert exotic country of choice here, and have been used by generations to help insert non-verifiable health claim here. There's no sugar in it. In fact, it has negative 15 calories and can help me lose weight as part of a calorie controlled diet along with exercise and eating well. And did we mention, it tastes amazing. And it's so well priced. You want all of this? Yes, I hear you say, we want to do all of this. Can you help us to design it? Of course we can. We can do all of your product development work. We can build a product from scratch, giving you all of these health claims and all the nice to haves that you'd like. How much is it going to cost? Lots. How much is it going to cost to produce? Double lots. Take one or two simple USPs, would be our advice, and make them work for you. We built our business on a lemonade. That's right, simple lemonade. I was known as the secret lemonade man for quite a long time. Our USPs were and are fresh lemon juice. A lot of it, it makes it more expensive, but it tastes great and people bought it, people still buy it. Supermarkets approached us. Big London department stores approached us. So don't try to overcomplicate things. Do something well and let your product stand on those USPs. Number one, and this is the big one. Are you making business or are you making a vanity project? If you've dreamt about your product, if you've fantasized about it, if you spent hours slaving over its design and its flavor, we understand it's difficult. But you need to remember that 
you are somebody with a limited resource and big companies can afford to do things that you cannot and they can afford to spend money with no hope of ever getting it back to test whether a process, a procedure works. You have to make money. Okay, here's a question. Are you a visionary business leader or are you a dreamer? Are you a visionary business leader that has a single minded laser focused determination to bring the best product to market or are you a dreamer? Well, I'm betting that you are going to want to say that you are a visionary business leader. But what's the difference between those two? Well, practically, there's not a lot in it. The reality is that the difference between a business leader and a dreamer is one thing, and that's the business behind the business leader. We have seen dozens of products come through our door, and my desk and my shelves are littered with the beautiful, wonderful failings of so many people that forget about the business aspect of their product. We're now in a position where within an hour of meeting somebody, we can now determine whether their project will be a failure or whether it will go on to be a commercial success. Not based upon the ingredients, not based upon the health claims, but based upon the attitude of the business and brand owners themselves. So often, people expect that the customers are willing to bear a price because they perceive it to be of greater value as a brand owner. That's not always the case. If I were to offer you a choice between product A and product B, but product B has had something done to it that will give it a small additional USP, but it costs 50% more, but you will not be able to claim any higher RRP on that product, then why are you doing it? It's not going to give you any additional benefit. Maybe a small amount of goodwill, but goodwill doesn't sell product. So the question is, are you willing to make the hard choices to compromise in your, rea in your vision, to compromise in your dream, in order that your product will get onto a shelf? Here's the wonderful news though. Any compromises you make today don't have to be the product you end up with in six months or 12 months or 18 months or 24 months time. You can turn a product that has flaws in it compared to how your idealized version of it looks into something wonderful and then you can use the bounty, the profit from the sales of that product and using its scalability, the in increased volume that you've been able to grow through being business minded into having more resources that you can now do what you want to because it is now within your power to do so. So, be business minded. Don't just say I'm gonna turn my product into a business have a business, make a product for that business, make it sell, be proud of it, be proud of what you create, both as a business and as a product. And that is where success lies. Making the hard decisions, making the hard compromises that you can change tomorrow. Now, I hope you've enjoyed our top three. We found them to be very useful. We've learned them ourselves. We've learned them through our customers and through our own experiences. We've made hard choices, we've made compromises, and we have a business that you're now viewing. So please, enjoy, and if you have any more questions, then please comment below and we'll see what we can do to answer them. Otherwise, we'd love you to like and subscribe. This is John, the physicist, signing out.